Well, good morning and thank you for joining me. It's a pleasure to be with you again. And we're examining these seven churches. And here Jesus is speaking to the church at Smyrna. Here Jesus is um, looking into different churches, you know. And it's, it's always interesting when you visit another church to see how they do things, how they worship, um, how they minister the word, how they minister the ordinances, how they meet, how they greet. What's the dynamics within that church, you know? What are they doing? Um, things like that. So it's always interesting to observe what's going on in different churches. And here Jesus himself does the same thing. He's going around and he's examining different churches to see what's going on there. But he's getting really down into the heart of the matter. And the church of Ephesus, we can call that church the church that abandoned its first love. But now he's speaking to the church in Smyrna. Um, the church in Smyrna, he says, the words of the first and the last who died and came to life. I'm the first and the last. I'm the one who was dead. And now I, I'm alive. I'm alive forevermore. He says, I know your tribulation. You know, he knows everything that we're faced with. I know your tribulation. I know your poverty. Now, look at that. That's interesting. This was not a church that was prospering. This was a church that was struggling financially. He says, I know your poverty. Beloved, it is no sin to be poor. No one wants to be poor. No one wants to be needy. But it's not a sin to be poor. Of course, we do believe that God is able to bless us. We do believe that God is able to lift us out of poverty. Um, but he says, I know your poverty. It, it, poverty uh, depends on the situation, you know, that you're in. It depends on, you know, um, your appearance, job opportunities, the country. Um, it could be a time of economic uh, depression, economic turnaround. Um, so many things can happening, can be happening and, and cause us to be in the position we're in. I do believe in the blessing of God and I pray that God blesses everyone who's listening to me. Um, because, you know, if you have a child, you want that child to have, you know, what they need. You want them to be, to, needs to be taken care of. You want to be, one of the most painful things for a mom not to be able to feed her baby and see, hear a baby crying for food and saying, I'm hungry, mom. I have nothing to eat. That's one of the most difficult things in life. You want to make sure your, your kids have. And God is our heavenly father and he wants to take care of our needs. He is our provider. But here's this church that was struggling. And Jesus said, I know your tribulation. I know your poverty. But he, he says, but you are rich. So I would call this church the rich, poor church. The rich, poor church. Poor materially, but rich spiritually. And Jesus said, I know your poverty, but you are rich. And the slander of those who say that they're Jews and are not. Let's get back here a bit. Um, you know, there are people in the church who are not so well off financially. And they may be considered poor, but you know what? In the eyes of God, they are rich. And there are many who don't have enough, but they are richer spiritually than the ones who have materially. And many times, um, people who are, um, they have the riches, they may be hungry for God, but many times we find you, you tend to be a bit more, you know, complacent in, in faith. Not as aggressive in faith. Um, so he says, I also know the slander of those who say that they are Jews, and are not, but they are a synagogue of Satan. So here was a group that was working with the devil and can be considered the synagogue, the meeting place of Satan. And people are, are, were gravitating to that and um, they were trying to contaminate the church. They were trying to get into the church and they were saying, okay, we're Jews. Why don't you accept us? And he says, I know. I know how you're fighting against those people. And then he went on. He says, do not fear. Do not fear what you are about to suffer. Hold a second here now. Do not fear what you are about to suffer. So Jesus knew exactly what was going to face this church, you know. And many times he knows what's going to happen to us. He knows what's coming to us. There are times he may even give us premonitions. He may give us a warning to say, you know what, something is coming your way. You've got to buckle up. You've got to be, be prepared. And to the church, he, he could do the same thing. And here he's telling this church, do not fear what you are about to suffer. Now, we must understand that suffering is not, does not mean that we are sinning and um, we are wicked and evil and uh, we are out of the will of God. No, 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 no. Many times as Christians, we will suffer. We will suffer even though we are in the perfect will of God. And, and the Bible, throughout the Bible, we see this happening. He says, the devil, behold, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison. Satan is working hard against you, church. And he says, 
I'm working to get some of you in prison. Satan knows how, how many people are, are, are afraid of dying and imprisonment and beatings and so on. He said, he's going to work to get some of you thrown into prison that you may be tested. And this was going to be a test of their faith. And he says, and for 10 days, you're going to have tribulation. For 10 days, you're going to have tribulation. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. We're going to continue this tomorrow. God bless.